If you're looking to grow a real business that cash flows without you being there, automation, that's a hot word for a lot of people. You need to understand this concept that we're about to talk about. Most business owners are really self-employed people. They work longer hours for more hours and are literally making enough to just get by. Some of these business owners work 40, 60 hours a week and sometimes make less than what they were making in their job. With that being said, it doesn't mean that they should go back to their job, but they should understand the concepts that I'm about to share with you right now to build a real business. And if you already have a business that's cash flowing, 20, 50, $100,000 a month, this will help you grow your company. Most people are focused on sales and marketing and they're trying to just make more money, which is important, don't get me wrong. I'm all about sales and marketing, but this structure where you actually build an organization, this will help you go farther faster. So when we talk about organization, we're, we are talking about automation. Like if you had a business and the core functions of the business were handled, right? Sales, marketing, fulfillment, finance, and you had a system to build an organization and it would self-correct and everybody knew exactly what they were supposed to do and they knew exactly what their target would be, you would have something that is automated, but it comes through people, right? Every single company that I know of, whether you're online or you're a retail business, they share these core functions that's, that's needed to grow a company. One quote that I really like is, one man can do anything, but he can't do everything, right? So when you think about your business and you think about those categories, you have you know staffing and, and placement of the people, you have sales, you have marketing, you have fulfillment, you have finance, and when you, when you line those areas up, if you had the structure where you had a team and everybody was focused on their jobs, you could grow a company. So with these concepts, I've been able to do millions of dollars, more importantly, help business owners doing maybe it's 20 to 50 grand, maybe it's they're stuck at seven figures and they're trying to get to that next level. They're trying to buy back their time. They're trying to put systems and organizations in place to grow. This, this is what works. Let's assume that you were making cash flow, right? Or you were working with a company that was making cash flow. Then you would want to understand these areas of the company. Number one, recruiting and staffing. Typically, I call this division one. So when we build an org structure, an org board, this would be division one. Division one is responsible for recruiting employees, staffing them, onboarding. They also keep statistics for the entire company and it's all housed in this division. This division one is the thing that actually puts the organization in place. That's its purpose, right? Most companies do not implement this. Um, sometimes you hear people call this, you know, HR, right? Human resources. That's what this is. Number two is typically division two, which is marketing and sales, okay? Now, specifically marketing and sales ascending uh, people that were initially buyers, ascending them to the next uh, service or product, right? <clears throat> so for us and some of our companies, we have 30 different sales representatives in division two. Some of the companies have a dozen. Some of them have a couple, right? Point being is this division is all about ascending and upsell and doing, you know, the cross sales and basically bringing those people um, into the next step in the value ladder. When I say value ladder, it could be a higher ticket product or service. It could be a subscription. There's a lot of different things that they could sell, but that's what they're focused on. And their main statistic is gross income. The third area would be finance, which would be division three. So in division three handles payroll, handle, you know, tracks all the income, tracks all the disbursements, you know, what's being paid out. And uh, they're looking at, the amount of collections, they're making sure that everything that is owed to the company is paid to the company. Uh, division four is fulfillment. So fulfillment would be the delivery. It's where things get produced. You know, whatever was sold, that's where it gets produced. There typically is a division five, which is quality control. Quality control is quality control of the product. Could also be quality control of the staff. Most companies 
that are just trying to get to 100K a month or a few hundred thousand a month, they maybe don't have this division. The next division would be um, marketing, specifically to the general public. This could be to people that have never purchased a product from you. In division six, it's all about you know the brand, uh, public relations. It's maybe setting up strategic partnerships, right? And this isn't something where it has to be like this. Obviously, not every company is the same, right? But these are general principles. And when we look at it, we have those main categories. We have recruiting and staffing. We have sales and we actually have fulfillment and finance. Those are the, the big the big core ones, right? And, and you'd adjust it to make sense for that company. And ideally, the, the organization works in a streamlined way where, think about it, somebody comes in through marketing, they go to sales. After sales, you know, they, they finance, checks them off, everything's good. They get the product and, you know, it's delivered. Uh, and then it kind of repeats and it's, it's almost like... Um, a self-fulfilling uh, uh, machine where someone works through the ecosystem after they buy the product, they get routed back to divisions two to be market and sold other products and services. The reason why this is super important though is because as the business owner, eventually you want your attention to be on creating new products, getting more inspiration to create the next thing. You wanna go ahead and spend your time maybe working on the brand and really, you know, casting the vision and, and being an example of, of the company. And it doesn't always have to be ran like that. Obviously, if you're making like a digital product or a digital course, that would be a really effective thing to do for the founder or the CEO. So if I had to summarize that, the biggest mistakes that owners make, whether they're stuck at 20 to 50K, 10K, 100K, is they're wearing multiple hats, they're doing multiple jobs that could be handled by someone else. They don't have a proper chain of command where they don't have a person that's fully responsible for fulfillment. They could just communicate to them and then boom, it gets handled. And they don't actually establish the company with the staff. Now, for some people, most people, like if you're doing, you know, 15K a month or 20K a month, probably doesn't make sense for you to, you know, get someone to recruit and staff and do that position full time. So you could work with a company like me or, or with us and you know we could staff people for you, right? And, and it's more of like a, a pay as you go kind of deal, what you need and then the person gets placed. But the reason why that's important is because you need to learn as the owner how to stop doing minimum wage tasks. You need to learn as the owner how to stop running around like a blind chicken, right? You going from fulfillment to support to sales, to marketing, doing all these random tasks. And, and when you do that, it slows you down. You're less efficient, meaning less efficiency, you know, less cash flow. And, and last but not least is as the owner, you're not able to spend time on what exactly grows the business, not put your time and, and energy into that area that's actually going to push the business forward, which I do believe for a lot of like online businesses, uh, it should be in divs, division six. It should be the marketing, the brand, you know, the creation of future products and, and really doing that. The day-to-day -day operations for sales, I would have a sales director. For marketing, I would have a head of marketing, a CMO. For fulfillment, you know, client success, I would have someone head that up. For finance, have someone handle that. And even just with that, you now have four different people that you could have report to you and give you updates. And if they need help, you know, you can give them help. So the next thing is this, uh, why establish division one first? And this might not be internal, right? You might go ahead and outsource this, but great people in the company is what leads to production. And <clears throat> why establish recruiting and staffing first? When you have great people, that leads to more production. More production leads to more profit, more cash flow. The business can afford to reinvest in itself. When someone quits or gets fired, you actually have a system that's predictable to replace them. One thing that I've seen is keeping low performers because the owner is scared they can't replace them. They have a person that's showing up late, they're not doing their job the right way, and the thought of like, man, I gotta keep this person because it's gonna be difficult to replace. But if you had this system down, you had you know, the playbook the person could plug into and you could train a new person in 48, 72 hours to do that job, 
you would have a lot more confidence and certainty in your business and getting rid of those low performers and plugging in A players. And just by doing this, one person that is a rainmaker, one person can literally be the thing that causes you to 4X, 5X, 10X in a matter of months. And because you have this system in place to replace people, the machine, which is the business, it will actually fix its own problems. It's designed to replace bad workers with good workers. When stats go low in an area, it's able to actually figure out why and then put in someone that is a right fit for that job. So if I had to summarize this, the ideal scene for a real company would be every core function is handled by a competent person. Each area is assigned a statistic to measure results. Each area has guidelines for their new staff to follow so that they could get results fast. And the machine has the power to correct itself by getting rid of bad workers and putting in good workers.